How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto became Zapani and fell in love with Twilight. Part 2. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. It didn't take them long to make it to Twilight's house, where they could see two figures guarding the door. White Pegasi with gold-plated armor covering only their heads, necks and backs, as if they were soldiers made for war. Naruto was curious as to why such guards were in such skimpy looking armor to begin with though. Most fighters he had met were completely armored, or at least clothed from head to toe with something. But these guards he didn't know what else to think. As Twilight, Naruto, and Spike approached the guards, they immediately stood upright and announced how Princess Celestia awaited their arrival and is waiting for them inside. Do you know why she would give such a rare visit as this one? The guards didn't say anything. Naruto tilted his head at this attitude. Why weren't they responsive? Twilight thought the same, but she only shrugged. Naruto, let's just head in. These are the royal guards of the princess. They tend not to speak unless they had a deep desire to do so, Twilight told Naruto. Naruto slowly walked past the guards, with a little bit of caution in his eyes. They stood still, like statues. It creeped him out a little. Inside the house, Naruto couldn't really believe his eyes on what he saw. A large pegasus or was it unicorn? It had both wings and a horn, a majestic rainbow mane that looked to be blowing in an invisible breeze and also wearing what looked to be a royal crown. She was reading a book that was suspended in air by a yellow aura, turning the pages as she desired with her magic. He couldn't help but leave his jaw hanging wide open. Twilight was also showing signs of shock, even though Spike had told her exactly who was here beforehand. Princess Celestia. It's an honor for you to come on such a visit. Twilight took a deep bow. Naruto looked between Twilight and back at Celestia. He then proceeded to scratch his chin with his hoof. That's one beautiful princess, Twilight. I had no idea royalty existed here he stopped as Twilight's hoof ended up shoving his face into the ground in an attempt to make him bow so as to not disrespect the princess. Twilight gave an oops kind of look as she chuckled, evidently not intending to use such force. Ah ha ha. Sorry Naruto, but you shouldn't be rude to the princess it can get you into a lot of trouble. Celestia looked up from her book and placed it back on the shelf, giving a heartwarming smile to the two ponies and the dragon standing in front of her. Twilight, my star pupil, it is great to see you again she then shifts her gaze back at Spike. And you too Spike. She then shifts her gaze to the blonde pony. Her smile slowly disappeared into a neutral expression. You must be the pony that Twilight found. The one who does not understand where or what he is. Celestia stated. Naruto went wide-eyed. How such a fact became known to Celestia, he didn't know. Naruto looked at Twilight, how does she know about that? Can she read people's minds? Twilight gave a nervous chuckle as she was about to speak up, but Celestia interrupted her. My star pupil sent me a letter just last night, telling me of your condition. I thought it was a strange case, so I arranged for a special, but brief, visit here. Celestia said, while getting closer to Naruto. You do seem to look rather unique, to put it in a mild tone. I haven't seen a pony like you. She eyed Naruto from head to toe, squinting her eyes slightly. Naruto raised a brow. He wondered why she kept calling Twilight a star pupil. Were they teacher and student? He couldn't tell, especially since he couldn't find any resemblance between the two. Naruto backed away from Celestia, trying to buy himself time to think from under the impressive presence. Um, she muttered. She lifted her head and looked towards Twilight and Spike. Twilight sparkle, Spike. Could I have you two wait outside? I need to speak to this individual alone. Twilight immediately bowed once more. Oh of course princess. Come on Spike, let's wait outside as they walked outside and shut the door behind them, Princess Celestia gave a forced cough and looked at Naruto. She circled around him, eyeing him down from head to toe once more. Strange clothes, a headband that seemed out of place, and most of all. A wagging foxtail. She thought it to be kind of cute on him, but she had to show some restraint, as if forcing herself not to hug it. She may be a princess, but even she was finding the feeling of cuteness difficult to keep in check. She stopped eyeing him from head to toe and stopped in front of him. You're not from Equestria, are you, Naruto? That is your name, correct? Celestia asked. Naruto gave a nod. That's my name, Princess. And how could you figure out I'm not from here? Your strange clothing design contributes to it, the look of your hair and the markings on your face, but there is one more factor of all. And that is your tail. Naruto then immediately rolled his eyes. Please tell me you're not going to cuddle my tail too. Celestia took a small step back, a little shocked. What makes you say that? Naruto furrowed his brow with an irritated glare. Every pony that I've seen today has had a field day over my tail. First it was hugged, then petted, then grabbed. All the ponies around here won't stop admiring it. It's like the tail has magical powers that entrances any pony that sees it. 
Celestia darted her eyes from left and right, trying to find an excuse to counter-argue it. Well, it is a lovely tale after all, Naruto. Naruto placed his hoofs on his head in disbelief. Oh lord, not you too. Princess Celestia gave a brief chuckle at Naruto's predicament. I am sure the problem will die down soon enough but tell me something Naruto Celestia began. Why is it that you didn't even know what you were? From what I know, you even had a difficult time walking, as if you were just born recently. Naruto stared at the princess for a moment. It seemed like he wouldn't be able to hide where he came from for much longer. Since she was of royalty, it probably wouldn't hurt to tell her the bare bones of what had happened to him. Heck, maybe she could help him out. Maybe she'd know some way of returning him to his own world. So he sat on his rear end and explained how he had died once due to a freak accident and ignorance on his part, but he didn't mention that, had been given a second chance by death himself and suddenly appeared in this world. The brief but detailed story left Celestia wide-eyed. You died once and were given a second chance at life. That she narrowed her eyes down. That's quite a tale, Naruto, but I don't think I can quite believe that. Naruto merely sighed in response. It's hard to believe, I know. Heck, I have a hard time believing such events took place to begin with, but he spread his arms, indicating the entirety of the room. I can tell this isn't a dream. It feels too real. And if it were a dream, I wish I could wake up from it. I miss the life I originally came from. Celestia didn't know how to respond to this. It was a strange set of events that left her bewildered. A pony that obviously wasn't from this life and time, and yet, she still couldn't believe it. She looked at him a little more, walking in a brief circle around him, while also stroking his tail with her own. Naruto shivered as he snatched his tail away from the princess. Darn it, can't you see that I've had enough furry tail business, you're freaking me out. Celestia gave a slight blush as she gave a chuckle. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself, and it's just not like me. But I had to feel the soft texture of your foxtail. It feels nice, to be honest. Naruto, once again, rolled his eyes. He wished he could just cut off his tail and be done with it. But that would just be unimaginable pain he'd rather not experience. As the princess stood in front of him, she asked. Well then, I believe you should keep your otherworldly experiences or whatever else they could be kept secret. You would probably just end up confusing others otherwise for once, Naruto agreed with her. If his previous life got leaked, it would make him appear really weird or even a murderer to others if they dove deeper into his past. I do have two more questions to ask you, Naruto, if you are so inclined. Naruto nodded, and the princess smiled. What were you previously, and are you getting used to your new form? In my life, I was called a human. We stood on two legs instead of four, and we didn't really have all this fur or tails or anything on us. You could say we're similar to Spike, actually except much taller, and we wouldn't have scales or anything like that. We normally wear clothes from head to toe as well. But as you can see, I'm only wearing my jacket and my pants. This form takes some getting used to, as well. Creatures similar to Spike you make these humans sound interesting she said with a smile. She did find something odd about his small description though, as she leaned her head toward Naruto's lower half. Also I do not see you wearing any pants, Naruto. Naruto raised a brow. No disrespect princess, but what are you talking about? My pants are right huh? As he patted himself down to his lower half, he realized he couldn't feel any cloth. He nervously looked down and became wide-eyed. He immediately covered his lower half and yelled. I'm naked. For the love of Raymond I'm naked. Twilight and Spike could hear some yelling from inside, something along the lines of Naruto yelling he's naked. Twilight immediately had a blush bloom on her muzzle as she stared at the door. The guards still stood there as if they were statues, but even they had a slight tinge of red on their faces as they stood their ground. What an equestria is Celestia doing in there? Twilight said to herself. Naruto, calm yourself. Your dignity is nowhere in danger while being pantsless it is common for us ponies to normally go about without clothing, except for during the winter. But but my pants my beautiful pants those pants saved my life more than once before Naruto mumbled in disbelief, rocking back and forth in the fetal position. Celestia just shook her head as she walked behind him and stroked his tail again. This made Naruto flinch out of his ball and crawl away from her, with his tail firmly between his hoofs. I said don't do that. Listen, Naruto. What you see right now is where you are. There are rules, customs, and other such things to learn when you're in a place that you are not familiar with. I'm sure you've gathered that much. Naruto stood back up on all fours and nodded. I'm aware it's just I'm sorry princess, I'm still trying to get used to things around here. It takes time. I agree Naruto. You should take the time to familiarize yourself. Or else you may be miserable she plainly stated. But after delivering that line, she gave a bright smile. Now then, I believe that's all that needed to be said, any other questions, Naruto? Naruto looked up at the ceiling and then back at her with a nod. Yes, it's more of a request, actually. Yes. 
Please don't touch my tail again. But her business with Naruto concluded, Princess Celestia took Twilight aside to talk to her about a few things as well. What it was, Naruto didn't know, since he was now the one waiting outside. He stared at the guards as they stood next to the door, not moving a single muscle. He poked at their armor, feeling the hard and cold surface. He looked back at the guards, and they still made no move. Naruto grinned slightly as he poked their noses too. No response. Then he tried sticking his tongue out. No response. He crossed his hooves while standing on his hind legs. Even though he had been human not long ago, he found it difficult to balance on hooves, falling on his butt once more. He sat up and stared at the guards for a couple minutes before growing bored. He tried talking to them. So uh how about them ponies, eh? You two got any girlfriends I should know about, or maybe boyfriends. Even with this line, the guards still made no reaction. Naruto was growing even more bored. These are really loyal guards. I'd hate to be one of them if it involves standing around all day and not moving a muscle. He wondered what was taking Celestia and Twilight so long inside, a few minutes had already passed. He just sighed. He still had an urge to go to that farm looking area he saw earlier, plus he needed to practice walking a little more. He looked back at the guards. Hey guard ponies, I'm going to take a walk. If the princess and Twilight come out before I get back, let them know, will you? The guards gave curt nods. Of all the reasons for a response, it was that. It didn't matter, he needed to head to that farm. Naruto kept improving his trotting as he crossed down, keeping the farm ahead of him. As he walked, he slowly started to increase the pace, going a little faster than he was before. He stumbled a couple of times but soon found himself in an easy power walk. So far so good let's try a little jog he started running a little faster, putting one hoof in front of the next, making sure not to trip over himself as he does so. He was so focused on running that he soon ran face first into a wooden fence. He gritted his teeth in pain as he shook his head, tenderly prodding the sore spot on his nose. He looked up to find a sign on the fence post that read Sweet Apple Acres. I knew it, some kind of apple farm, Naruto said to himself. It was worth exploring, since he hadn't been anywhere else. This was a good opportunity to test his jumping skills, to see if he still had it. He backed up a little bit, getting some running distance. Then he ran as fast as he could, before jumping over the fence, cleanly at least that was what he wanted to believe. One of his hind legs caught the fence, and Naruto landed on the other side of the gate, face first. He growled in the soft dirt, spitting it out as he sat up and looked around. It seemed to be a typical farm, although what caught his attention was the endless amount of apple trees in front of him. His jaw dropped at the forest of apple trees, pulling him in subconsciously. He looked up at the apple tree as he approached it, noting that the branches were well beyond his reach. He looked at the base of the tree then back up at the apples. This would be a good opportunity to see if his chakra system still worked. The technique he learned back when he was a lot younger, when Team 7 was still in full swing. He remembered back when Kakashi was teaching him, Sasuke and Sakura, how to summon chakra to their feet. When done correctly, it allowed them to walk up walls, or trees. It had taken a while to understand how to do it, and it had become natural to them as time went along. But he didn't know if it applied when to a pony. Taking a deep breath, he closed his eyes and focused. He pushed the chakra around himself as he directed it towards his four legs, storing the chakra inside his hooves. A small but brief chakra aura formed around Naruto as he opened his eyes. He looked back up at the tree and placed a hoof on the bark. As each hoof made a connection to the tree, he slowly started to walk up the tree. A hoof detached momentarily, but a small boost in chakra helped with that. He climbed the tree slowly and deliberately. Reaching both front hooves out, he threw his body towards a branch, desperately climbing up it. He soon managed to lift his entire body up, simply sitting on the branch. Naruto had beads of sweat on his face as he wiped it away with his left hoof. He sunk his teeth into the juicy and colorful apple. He cleaned off the core immaculately, spinning it as if it were a cob of corn. He feels his stomach plumping up slightly as the apple settled in. He gave a light burp as he relaxed into the tree, satisfied with it, and threw the apple core down below. Ah, that was a good apple, he said as he rubbed his stomach. As he did so, he took a look at his hooves in front of his face. Not a single finger. Suddenly his eyes bolted open as he realized something. Something very important. He had control of his chakra, but he couldn't use most of his jutsu anymore. The seals required fingers. Without them, he wouldn't be able to use anything. His thoughts went forward with a jutsu he did know and tried to think what he could use. The Rasengan, a move that has saved Naruto several times in the past, he wasn't sure he could use it, since that required the assistance of the Shadow Clone Jutsu. Although, it might be possible to perform the Shadow Clone Jutsu. It's just one very simple hand sign after all, maybe it can be adapted. He placed his hooves in a cross-like pattern, with one arm crossing horizontally and the other vertically. It could probably substitute for having no fingers. 
He crossed them and focused his chakra. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto yelled. As Naruto expected, there was no response. He needed fingers. He placed his hooves at the side of his stomach, feeling as though his strength had been cut in half most of his jutsu were impossible to use. But he'd find a way, he always did. Come on you pesky apple I almost got you. A small, red-haired pony was trying to grab an apple dangling from a tree. She was holding onto the branch that held the apple, keeping herself balanced. She reached out and managed to touch it, giving a small smirk and suddenly brimming with confidence. Almost got you I'll show her I'll show everyone that I'm good at picking apples. Maybe that's what my cutie mark will be too. It's gotta be something about apples. As she inched herself closer to the apple, the branch bent ever more. She paid it no mind as she made a desperate grab for the apple, catching it in both hooves. She gave a big bright smile as she grabbed it. Which quickly left her face as the branch broke. Relaxing his head on the tree, he looked at the splendid view in front of him, seeing endless apple trees as far as the eye can see. It was a breathtaking sight. He spotted a small pond nearby. It was an odd thing to see on an apple farm, but then again, Naruto wasn't an architect, so he wasn't really qualified to make such a judgment. Enjoying the view, watching the sun, even watching the fishes splash up and down in the small pond. Help me. I blubble can't swim. Yep, just nothing but the fishes yelling how they can't swim, Naruto thought. There was something really strange with what Naruto just thought. He sat up and looked at the pond once more, squinting his eyes, he could have sworn he heard some fish calling for help. Help blub 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 help. Naruto's eyes widened as he heard the words for help. He wasn't imagining it after all. He immediately hopped down from the branch, ninja style, landing safely on the ground as he forced chakra into his hooves, cushioning his fall. He then sped off in the direction of the pond, where he saw splashing and heard the calls for help. As the pond got closer, the thing that was calling for help became more apparent. It looked like a smaller version of a pony in his eyes, with a red mane and a light yellow colored body. It seemed to be a child. The drowning pony immediately took notice of Naruto. Mister, help me blue bu bub I can't swim. The young pony begged to him. In Naruto's eyes, there was no telling how long the child would last. Looking at the pond, he focused his chakra into his hooves. He had to make sure it was a balanced amount of chakra, because water was completely different from a solid object. This required much greater control than climbing a tree. He placed one hoof on the pond, and it stayed. So far, so good. He placed his other front leg out, and once more, it stayed in place. He slowly started to walk across the water, until he felt one of his hind legs sink slightly. Naruto managed to lift his leg before it pulled him under. The young pony was shocked to see Naruto walking on water like he was. But eventually, her shocked expression came to a halt as the young pony slowly lost her strength and disappeared under the water's surface. Naruto went wide-eyed and cursed himself, immediately reaching out to bite the pony's hair. He could feel a very weird taste in his mouth as he was almost pulled under along with the young one. Strengthening his back, he pulled the young pony out of the water and threw her towards the other side of the pond. He could see the young pony land safely on the soft grass and gave a sigh of relief. But this relief was short-lived as he felt his feet almost give way under him. He couldn't relax, not yet. He slowly walked off the small, though deep, pond and onto dry land. He collapsed on the ground as he tried to catch his breath. That was scary. Forcing my techniques into a rushed experiment was a big risk. Good thing it worked out. He still had a lot to learn about this furry body of his, and he needed to adapt as soon as possible. He eyed the young pony, examining her from head to toe. Good, she seemed to be breathing. But Naruto wondered where it came from. Did it live on this farm? As he was trying to gather his thoughts on this, he stood up, hearing voices from the distance. The voices had a peculiar accent to them, and they were shouting for someone, Apple Bloop he thought. As the voices got closer, he saw an orange pony galloping towards him. It looked like a female pony in his eyes, sporting a cowboy hat and a blonde mane and a ponytail, and a dull orange body. And her accent, he'd never heard anything like it before. The awkward hat-wearing pony went wide-eyed as she saw the young pony collapsed on the ground, wet and shivering. She gritted her teeth, staring right at him. You, Blondie, what did you do to Apple Bloom? The cowgirl shouted. Naruto waved his hooves in front of him. Whoa, calm down. I don't know who this Apple Bloop or whatever her name is, but I had to save a drowning pony from that lake there. He said as he pointed towards the lake. The cowgirl pony raised a brow as she took another look at the pony and then looked at Naruto as she pointed towards the pony. You saved Apple Bloom? Naruto gave a nod. He assumed the young pony's name was Apple Bloom. I was just minding my own business until I heard shouts for help. I came here as soon as I could and saved this drowning pony, from, well drowning, Naruto explained. The cowgirl pony relaxed as she walked over to Apple Bloom, nudging her. Apple Bloom, wake up, she said as she nudged her sister. She's going to need rest. 
That whole experience took a lot out of her, Naruto said. The cowgirl looked back at Naruto and then at Apple Bloom. She gave a firm nod towards him. Naruto grabbed the pony using his front hooves and placed her on the cowgirl's back. She gave a big smile towards him. Thank you kindly, stranger. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't know what would have happened to my dear little sister so thank you. It's no problem my name's Naruto by the way. Mine's Applejack, pleased to meet ya, she said as she placed her hoof in Naruto's. They could both hear a big deep voice within the distance. Applejack looked back at Naruto. Well, I gotta get back to my brother. He was looking for Apple Bloom too. I owe you, Naruto, I really do, she said with a big smile. Naruto merely smiled back, anytime Applejack. But this response, Applejack was about to head off until she looked back and got a good look at Naruto. By the way Naruto did I mention you had a. At this point, Naruto wished he didn't have ears. He knew what she was going to say, he just knew it. So he saved her the trouble by interrupting her. Yes, I know, I have a fluffy foxtail, what is with everyone in my tail? He ranted. Applejack tilted her head at his comment and merely shook her head. Ah was going to say that those whisker marks were kinda cute, they look kinda like a kitten, she said with a slight blush. This took Naruto by surprise, a blush forming on his own muzzle. Oh I suggest you get off the farm as well. It's off limits. I'll make an exception this time because of what you did, but ask for permission next time, she said as she galloped off towards the distant voice. He was still a little stunned at the whisker comment, since it was a bit different than his foxtail. He shook his head, venting the heat in his face. Huh, at least that Applejack pony is nice, I think. Naruto said to himself. He didn't want to linger here any longer, not wanting to cause any more trouble than necessary. He galloped off in a random direction, jumping over a fence as he got to it. He assumed he was off their property now, but one more major detail had to be solved. He had to figure out where the hell Twilight's house was. The Everfree Forest, you are sure of this? Celestia asked. Yes Princess Celestia. Spike and I found him at the edge of the Everfree Forest while looking for a particular mushroom. He was covered in this strange purple smoke or fog we couldn't tell what it was. Twilight confirmed to her. The details were strange indeed. Celestia brought her hooves together, thinking deeply. If what Naruto said to her was true, he was definitely brought into this world under unique circumstances and Twilight's information on the event only contributes to it. But something about this didn't seem right, the events just didn't add up. Celestia only sighed as she looked at Twilight. Tell me my pupil, what is your reaction towards this individual? Well he seems nice, but confused at the same time. It's like he was born recently with the way he acts. Yes, I gathered the same idea. He is a rather strange individual. However, he seems to be a nice young Jintlepony, despite having some Celestia paused for a moment and eyed down at the ground before looking at Twilight once more, unique features, to put it simply. Twilight gave a nod towards her teacher. They both stopped talking for a minute or two as the silence consumed the room. Celestia looked back at Twilight. He is staying with you, correct? Twilight flinched a little at the sudden question, with a small blush across her face. Well yes, I couldn't just abandon him. He seems to be having all sorts of issues, especially with not knowing where he was and this amnesiac vibe he's giving off. It just screams help me, Twilight said to Celestia. She gave her a firm nod. Do you know how long he will be staying? That really caught Twilight off guard. Well no, he never told me. How long do you want Naruto to stay with you? Until he's gotten his bearings and is well enough to take care of himself. Basically, I would like to not abandon him. Twilight replied. You do realize that having a young stallion, such as him, living in your own house, would not be a healthy matter? Twilight tilted her head thoughtfully. I don't understand. It's not like he's been here for a long time. It's only been a day or two since he arrived. Yes, of course, but I am only worried for your well-being. There can be circumstances to where a mare and a stallion could be out of control, to say it simply. Twilight suddenly felt her face flush red. What's gotten into you, your highness? It's nothing like that. Not at all her eyes darted to the floor before coming back up to Celestia. Nothing at all. Celestia locked her eyes on Twilight's. A moment later, Celestia blinked as she nodded slowly. Very well I will trust you with this, but please don't let him live here for too long. Once he is well make sure you send him on his way. I am sure it would be only a burden on him and yourself if he stayed. Twilight blinked once at Celestia's request. Ah yes, your majesty, but I have one request myself. Celestia got up from the sofa and motioned for her to follow her towards the door. What would that be, my pupil? If he is to agree with it, I would like to keep him here until he has arrangements to live on his own, be it his own place, or simply to be off on his travels once more. Celestia stopped walking and stared at the ceiling for a moment while sucking her lower lip in thought. She stared back at Twilight. You're sure of this, Twilight? 
Twilight nodded in response. Celestia sighed as she maintained the eye contact. Very well. All I ask is that you do not keep him here too long. Also, do keep an eye on him. Send me a message if anything goes wrong. Understand. Twilight nodded confidently in response. Well you made it goddamn that took too long. Naruto had been lost around town for the last half hour. He'd spent a good amount of that time running through and around the town, trying to find his way back to that treehouse. It felt as if he'd taken two laps of the town and he'd worked up a decent sweat. I really should have asked Twilight for a map or something before I took off. Eventually he located the tree that housed both the town library and the lavender unicorn that had brought him in. He saw Spike sitting outside, reading the brown book in his claws. The gold-armored guards were still standing watch on either side the library door, so he assumed that Celestia and Twilight were not done talking just yet. Naruto walked toward Spike. Much to his surprise, Spike looked up from his book and waved at him. Hey, Naruto, where have you been? Spike asked. The guards told me you went for a walk, but you were gone for a good while. Naruto merely scratched his head as he recalled what happened back at the farm. It's a long story, but in a nutshell, I saved a drowning pony while I was walking around. Naruto said like it was no big deal, but to Spike and the guards it was a pretty big deal, immediately going wide-eyed at the statement. Spike immediately hopped up and smiled, while the guards just went back to their neutral demeanor after the brief shock passed. Wow, really? Who did you save? Spike asked. Do you know two ponies named Applejack and Applebloom? Naruto replied. Well, yeah. They're Twilight's friends, and they own Apple Acre Farm. So what Naruto heard from Applejack is correct. He mistakenly trespassed onto the farm without knowing it. But, because of his trespassing, he was able to save the little sister of Applejack. That's one way of introducing yourself to someone. I saved Applebloom. This girl, er, pony, named Applejack, came over to me and thanked me for saving her. Wow. You must really be something to be saving Applebloom like that. Spike said with a cheerful smile on his face. Are you like a superhero or something? Um no, I was just helping out a pony in need, that's all. I'm sure anyone would have done the same thing in my stead. They continued to talk about what had happened with Naruto at Sweet Apple Acres. A few minutes later they were interrupted by the sounds of the door opening. Naruto's head immediately snapped in the direction of the guards. Two figures appeared between the pair as Celestia and Twilight exited the library. The guards stomped their hooves down as if signaling her arrival. Twilight looked at Naruto with a nervous smile. Hey Naruto, been waiting long? She asked. Just took a quick walk is all, getting used to the surroundings and such. Naruto said with a smile. Celestia was about to say something else when Spike suddenly hopped towards them. Twilight, Princess Celestia. Naruto saved Applebloom from drowning earlier. He said with happiness. Twilight's and Celestia's jaws dropped at the sudden information as they looked straight at Naruto. Naruto did what? They both said in unison. Naruto gave a small blush in his cheeks as he scratched his head with his hoof. Yeah I guess I saved a drowning pony on an apple farm, did I forget to mention that with my walk? Naruto said nervously, pretending to be confused. They still stared at him in disbelief as their facial expressions contorted towards a smile. That's wonderful Naruto. Twilight said with a cheerful smile. Princess Celestia looked impressed at the stallion's heroic behavior as well. It is indeed. You just saved a pony's life after all. I thank you Naruto. Celestia said. Naruto couldn't help but blush from the praise he was getting. Celestia looked at Twilight and then back at the rest of the group. Well then, I guess my claims may have been mistaken. Maybe your rival was that of a blessing. Celestia said. Naruto raised a brow at that. What does that mean? It is nothing but now I must go. It is getting to about time for my sister to raise the moon, so I must return to Canterlet post haste, she said as she spread her wings, her guards doing the same, before slowly lifting off. Farewell Naruto, may fortune favor you. With that, she flew off, along with the guards, towards the castle bearing mountain on the horizon. They watched as she slowly disappeared into the distance as Spike, Twilight, and Naruto watched. Naruto blinked a little, wondering what she meant by her claims being mistaken. Nonetheless, he did know that his actions left a good impression of him on the princess. And he knew that giving a good impression with someone of royalty was a good start. She ran off in a hurry Naruto said curiously. What did she mean by raising the moon, though? Twilight thought she'd seen the end of Naruto's oblivious nature, but it seems she was wrong. She looked at Naruto with a dumbfounded look. Don't tell me you're not aware how the sun and moon works. Naruto tilted his head at her question, a puzzled look plastered on his face. It just goes up and down on its own, Naruto answered. Twilight shook her head. Princess Celestia is in charge of the sun, while her younger sister, Princess Luna, is in charge of the moon. It's how the day and night cycles work here. Naruto stood there, looking at her as if she's crazy. You can't be serious. I'm very serious. 
Twilight said as she squinted with one eye. Naruto looked up into the sky and said out loud. There's so much to learn here, so much that's different from what I used to know it's kind of sad he said with a frown. It's even more surprising how it requires two unicorns just to handle the sun and moon. You mean alicorns? She said. Uh. Princess Celestia and Princess Luna are called alicorns, basically, a mix of a pegasus and unicorn. They are two of the three that exist and are very powerful. A mix of two species. That would explain how Celestia had both a horn and wings. He looked up towards the sun and then back at her. So what did Princess Celestia talk to you about? We mostly talked about how I found you and what the plan was for you while you are here. I see it's probably none of my business to ask, but did the princess come off as hostile towards me? Naruto asked. Twilight raised a brow at him. No, I don't think so why do you ask? I'm not sure I think it's Naruto began, but then he just closed his mouth. He just shook his head. Never mind it's probably just me. Still growing used to things here after all. Spike stood in the background, all quiet while he read his little book. He looked up towards them and shook his head, digging his nose through his book still. So how are you feeling so far? You've been here for a day or so now, and you saved a pony from drowning sounds like you're quite the stallion despite being confused most well, all of the time. Twilight asked. She's right. I've made a good amount of progress and figured out where I stand in terms of abilities. I'm gonna need a little more training to improve what I do have, but I'm mostly going to be playing it by ear while I get used to things here. Getting used to things here I can't repeat that enough. Here, in an unknown world that's completely unfamiliar all I can do is get used to it. There's no chance of getting back to Kanoha. Well, I hope there was a way, but I don't want to put too much thought into that. I'm going to have to adapt until I find out if it's possible or not. And again, my world is in constant war, always an ongoing conflict. Especially with the Akatsuki who were hunting him and the QB. It was a miserable life. It was ironic how my death took me from a world of endless chaos and placed me in a world of peace and tranquility. There was no war, everyone seemed to treat everyone else equally. It was nice to be able to walk through the streets without everyone avoiding me for being the QB's host. This was paradise. Naruto. Are you there? Naruto snapped back to reality as he heard Twilight's voice. Huh? Yes. Did you say something? I said, are you feeling alright? Oh, yeah I'm fine once I get used to things here, I'll be alright, I think. Twilight looked a little puzzled at Naruto's last response, but she merely shrugged. I see well, okay then. Do you have any idea how long you'll be staying for? I mean, it's not a problem or anything, but my house is pretty boring to most ponies what with all the books and me asking questions, and... No, that won't be a problem I just but in a way, she had a point. He couldn't stay with her forever. It would just be a burden on her. He took a moment to think about how he was stuck in this world. He needed to get his hooves under him, learn how to live on his own. He looked at Twilight. I do need to make some progress if I'm going to be here in Ponyville for a while as I don't have anywhere else to go. There's no point in acting like a lazy bum. I need to get active. Twilight gave a smile at Naruto. That's the spirit Naruto. But what do you plan to do? And that was a good question. He didn't know much about the history of this world, he didn't have any money, and he certainly didn't have a home of his own. These were the three most important things that he needed to attain. What does the currency look like here in Equestria? Twilight tilted her head at Naruto's strange question. What kind of money does this land use? He corrected and simplified himself. You've never seen the stopping in mid-sentence, she was feeling a little tired of the weird questions and just decided to answer it without question. The money here is called bits. They're small coins that we use to purchase anything of value. Come inside, I'll show you. Sitting on the sofa, he could see a few coins laid out on the coffee table. They were golden and round, with a slightly different colored rim around them. He held one coin with two hoofs to get a good look at it. He blinked a little. No paper money, but just coins. It would be a burden if one had to carry a bag full of these. There are a number of ways to get bits. Mainly you get them from... Working. Naruto interrupted. Twilight nodded before continuing, glad that he understood this much at least. Right. I get bits for running the library for example. Naruto gave a firm nod. He knew that he needed money. Without money, he would be quite limited in what he would be able to do here. He needed a job, he knew that. But first, Twilight, I have a request. What is it? I would like to live here for a little longer. At least until I get enough money to get a home of my own. You have treated me with a lot of kindness heck, more kindness than I've ever been given. I'm not here to abuse your kindness or anything, but barely having any possessions of my own money, property, or anything else I am rather lost here. So. Naruto stood up before promptly falling to his knees, bowing towards Twilight, startling her with a sudden sentiment. I ask of you please let me stay here. 
I'll pay you back somehow once I'm all settled in. Twilight didn't know what to think of Naruto's response. He was definitely appreciative of what she had done for him, which she could see. She waved her hoof towards Naruto. Hey, no need to go that far, Naruto I can't just abandon a pony in need after all please, get up. She stammered nervously. Naruto returned to his hooves per her request. For now, just get some rest. We can decide on what kind of work we can find for you tomorrow, alright? Why not start right now? Naruto asked. Twilight pointed her hoof towards the window. It's already nighttime, Naruto. Naruto blinked at her response. He walked towards the window and found that the moon was high in the sky, with no trace of the sun to be seen. He looked back at Twilight with his mouth agape. But it was just sunny. How did the night come so quick oh as he remembered that the two princesses control the day and night cycle, so the day and night cycle switch a little more quickly than he was used to. But he started to wonder. If the sun and moon cycles are controlled by two princesses, does that mean if one went missing, it would cause an eternal day or night? The whole idea was still confusing to him. Twilight walked up to him and patted him on the shoulder. You'll get used to things around here, I promise Naruto. Naruto couldn't help but smile at that. Yeah, you're right. I'll get used to things around here no matter what he said towards the window, and then back at twilight. Believe it. The next morning. While Spike stayed at the library to do his chores and to take care of the place, Twilight and Naruto headed off to the Ponyville Square in hopes of finding Naruto a job. I have no idea how long I'm going to be living here, but the last thing I want is to feel like I'm being a lazy bum. Naruto thought. The square was bustling with activity as ponies went about their daily lives. The sounds of vendors promoting their wares, of haggling being carried out, of little fillies playing nearby. But what Naruto really noticed was just how pleasant the mood around everyone sounded happy, more so than he'd ever heard before in Kanoha. This is Ponyville Square, Naruto. A place of fun, relaxation, and goods. As you can see, there are several stalls here selling their goods. And we're not far from some of the more notable permanent locations, like Sugarcube Corner where Pinky works and Rarity's Carousel Boutique. But you already knew that right. Sort of but I don't think I was shown Ponyville Square in its entirety, but wow, it's really busy here in the mornings. It is, isn't it? Now, over here Naruto she approached a nearby board, full of paper and bulletins and the like. Naruto looked at it curiously as he looked back at Twilight. Is the bulletin board, or as some say it, the request board. Ponies post odd jobs or menial tasks here that other ponies can do if they're looking for a quick bit. Although, a lot of the requests are really are more geared towards part-time employment. There's not a lot of ponies that can't just get help from their friends for the small things. Naruto gave Twilight a nod. This seemed kind of similar to the missions he did back in his own world, except they weren't divided by rank or anything. In fact, as Naruto looked at some of the requests, he became a little interested. Some of them sounded odd to him though. Looking for Manta Curtail requesting part-time help at Sugarcube Corner, looking for nighttime bodyguards, and searching for a lost kitten. He said some of the requests out loud. The last one made him cringe as memories of a demon-possessed cat filled his brain. He held a hoof to his head, remembering how one of his first missions as a ninja involved finding a missing cat. That little demon-possessed cat. The little rascal loves to run away from its owner, and it never caused anything but trouble for the ninja that took the job. Shaking the thoughts from his head, he looked towards Twilight. Some of these look pretty nifty, and some of them look like something for someone with my expertise. Twilight gave him a happy smile. Well I'm glad for that Naruto. I'm sure whatever request you take, you will excel at. Although she said as she pointed a hoof at the Mantica request. Whoever placed this request must be a few books short of a stack Manticars are pretty dangerous beings I don't know anyone that can take one on, at least not successfully. Why? Manticars are part scorpion, part lion, and part eagle. They're very ferocious beings, very large and quite dangerous. My friends and I took one on a while ago, and we got lucky it didn't turn us into Manticar Chow. So how did you defeat it? We didn't. It had a thorn in its paw. After Fluttershy took it out, it became fairly docile and just ran off. Manticars are not to be trifled with however she said as she attempted to rip the request off the board. Wait. Naruto stopped her from ripping the request down. How much can I get by obtaining a Manticore tail? Why do you ask? Just tell me, Twilight. Twilight was a little hesitant at first, but his curiosity had triggered her own. She looked back at the request, 300 bits that's a lot of money. And the request is from a pony in Canterlot. Canterlot, what's that? You could say it's a town for the nobles. The royal castle is also there. I see. 300 bits that sounds like a lot of money. I might be able to afford a lot of things with that. Maybe even a house. But I'm not really able to fight right now, not yet. It'll be a good idea to start with smaller jobs, use those for training and learning. The Mantica request wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. Naruto thought. Naruto. 
Err, yes. Are you okay? You were spacing out a little. Twilight asked. He couldn't let Twilight know about his plan to go after the Manticore, since it would just worry the hell out of her. No, no was just thinking about something anyway he said as he placed his hoof on the sugarcube corner request. From what I saw inside yesterday, it can't be that hard being a part-timer there. And it's an hourly pay of 8-bit sounds like good pay to me. Some money is better than none. He said in satisfaction. Twilight merely nodded. Sounds good, Naruto. Let's head on over there with the request. To say it was crowded when they entered Sugarcube Corner would have been an understatement. It was packed full of customers wanting pastries, sweets and other assorted goods. The noise inside the store was overwhelming and the heat was unbearable, caused by a both the fact that this was a bakery and having too many ponies in an enclosed space. He could make out a blue pony, with a rather unique hairdo, standing at the register. A pink pony rushed in and out of the kitchen like there was no tomorrow, carrying orders on her head. In the crowd there was a grey pegasus with a goofy look flying around, bumping into ponies all over the room, bringing a smile to Naruto's muzzle. The pony sort of reminded him of himself when he was younger. When Naruto's attention returned to the area by the register he saw where the help was needed. They needed someone to keep the orders together, get the right pony the right goods and on their way. The pony at the register was sweating as she got the orders taken care of. Naruto and Twilight eventually made their way to the register through the crowd. Yes, a strawberry cake, a dozen pastries, um, yes, what can I get for you sir? Actually, I'm here because of the request board. You're looking for a part-timer, right? Naruto said. The pony's face distorted into a look of glee as she gave him a big smile. You're here to work part-time oh thanks Celestia, you can't believe how busy it is in here, I thought no one would accept it. Please, go to the back of the kitchen and talk to Pinkie Pie, she'll fill you in. I have to get these orders straightened out. She said as Naruto is pushed by the register pony. Twilight just stood there, watching as Naruto got shoved into the back, giggling at the abruptness of his disappearance. I'll see you later then Naruto. Have fun. Twilight shouted to him, though Naruto couldn't hear her over the patron's shouts. Where's my cake? I want my pastries. I've been waiting for an hour. Yay, Naruto, you're back. We're going to have so much fun today. He didn't think he would be meeting Pinkie Pie again so soon. Part of him wished that he'd never see her again, because this pony acted like she was on a sugar high all the time. He quickly looked over the kitchen. There were a fair number of ovens on one side of the room. A table in the middle that was home to many cooling pastries and other goods. On the far side of the room was much of the counter space, much of it overtaken by ingredients, bowls and mixing utensils in a haphazard mess. Pun, you say. You do realize that there are tons of people out there looking for pastry blood, right Naruto said with a dumbfounded expression. Pinkie Pie merely smiled at him as she patted his soft tail which he promptly flicked away from her. Oh don't be silly. The more people, the more fun. But the more fun, the more orders I have to take she paused for a moment, a frown creasing her face. But hey. Now that you're here, it'll be double the fun and we'll fill orders even faster. She said, quickly perking up as she rushed over to grab an apron and then rushed back to Naruto. He could have sworn she made the entire trip in under three seconds. This pony had way too much energy, but that wasn't always a bad thing. A lot of energy could be a good thing if channeled properly. Quickly, put this on so we can have so much fun making things together. She's underestimating the situation she's much too carefree. Then again, I was like that when I was younger. Boundless energy, pulling pranks, doing anything I could to show people that they weren't always right about everything. No. I can't think about that right now. I have a job to do, I need the money. He placed his head under the loop of the apron and clipped it on at the back with both his hoofs. It was a plain white apron with small smudges on it, presumably from cooking ingredients. Alright, so what do I need to do first? Pinky may have seemed to be carefree, but when it came to baking, she seemed to be able to completely focus her energy into the job. The rate at which she could keep cakes, pastries, turnovers and other baked goods coming was ridiculous. It was everything Naruto could do to keep up for the longest time, and all he had to do was give the finished goods to the waiting customers. Then there was the fact that she didn't use a timer, and Naruto couldn't spot a clock in the room. Pinky just pulled stuff out seemingly at random, but he'd never heard anything but admiration for the cooking from this place. Pinkie Pie seemed to have an ability that allowed her to catch missed steps and just intuitively know how the goods were baking. Eventually he got used to the pace she maintained and soon found himself helping to prepare the batter in between orders. Once he got up to pace, he started chatting with Pinky a little. Just how are you so good with this, Pinky? It's like you have a sixth sense on baking. It's pretty amazing. Naruto said. She responded with an overexcited smile. Because, silly, I work here and I love to bake. Ooh, ooh. She stopped what she was doing and ran up towards Naruto as she stared at him in a creepy way. And I love to party too. 
Well, mostly parties that I make but hey, I love parties. Do you love parties? Yeah, I think I do. I haven't been to a party in a long time though, so. You haven't partied in a long time we need to change that. I'll make us a party for tomorrow. It'll be super duper fun. No, that's quite alright, really, but we should be. Oh, but why not? As she was pestering him to agree to a party, Naruto pointed a huff at one of the ovens. He could see a large fat of bread pushing up against the screen of the oven. Because that cake is about to explode, Pinky. Get it out, quickly. As if triggered by his statement, the oven exploded open, sending cake, bread and batter all over the place. Naruto just stood there, dumbfounded at the even bigger mess that the kitchen was now in. Pinky, on the other hand, simply licked the batter off of her face. She smacked her lips a couple times and gave a frown. Mm, too much butter, not enough sugar. She said with a giggle. She rushed off to mix up a new batch. Naruto was frozen to that spot, shocked by what he had just seen. There had been something about the way she had licked some of that batter off of her face. There was something about the manner in which she did so, freezing him in place as his cheeks flushed red. He soon got himself back to work as he remembered what he was doing here. He shook his head and went back to work, not wanting to delay anything further. Everything went smoothly for the remainder of the morning after they cleaned up the aftermath of the cake explosion. He soon found himself fairly bored as Pinky was able to keep up on much of the baking on her own. He was happy to be done with the rush, it had been more hectic than he expected. He wondered how often the guy from Ichiraku Raymond felt like that. The pony that had been at the register walked into the kitchen with a cheerful smile. Good work Pinkie Pie. And you too, um she began, stopping abruptly as she realized she'd never gotten Naruto's name. My word, I'm so sorry. I put you to work without any introductions. You'll have to forgive me, it was just so busy in here, she exclaimed hurriedly. Naruto grinned as he scratched his head bashfully. It's no problem. I'm just glad I could help. I'm Naruto. And I'm Mrs. Cake. Again, very glad you could help out in the kitchen with Pinkie Pie. Ever since my husband fell ill we've had issues getting through the startup rush in the morning. So I had to put in a request on the request board. I thought no one would come, since most every pony is already busy in the morning. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, I can, and it's no problem. I'm just glad we we were able to get this out of the way. Yes, of course. Mrs. Cake said. In response, Pinkie Pie placed an arm around Naruto's neck. You should have seen him Mrs. Cake. He was going nearly as fast as me with filling out all those orders, it was all like swoosh, and all wham he's amazing. Pinkie Pie said, barely understandable with the speed she spoke. Mrs. Cake rubbed her chin as she took a good look at Naruto from head to hoof. He couldn't get used to how people kept looking at him. He couldn't look that strange, could he? Mrs. Cake just shrugged. I see you've definitely worked hard today Naruto, so therefore Mrs. Cake placed a small bag in his hooves, jingling slightly. A little extra for the great help you've given us. 10 extra bits plus the 24 you earned in just a few hours, totaling 34 bits. I hope you'll work with us again sometime. You were a big help, thank you. Mrs. Cake said with a smile. Naruto merely gave a nod as he placed the bag into his jacket pocket. He took off the apron from over his head and placed it on the counter. You bet, Mrs. Cake. If it ever gets really busy again, I'll be sure to help, if I can. Naruto said with a smile. With a job well done and money in hand, Naruto left Sugarcube Corner. Mrs. Cake said that it had only been a few hours. Three in fact, if his math was right. He started looking around town as he munched on a pastry that he'd received from Mrs. Cake. He heard the sounds of chatter and business going about, though he didn't see twilight anywhere. He was getting used to the surroundings, soon he would have an understanding of where everything was. It was just a matter of exploring. He soon found himself standing in front of the request board as he wandered around town. It was about noon. It would be nice to tackle another request before he finished up for the day. More work in his attempt to make enough money for other things. The request for the Manticore tail was still there. I wonder why no one's picked up that request yet maybe there's no combatite ponies around. That's a little strange. But regardless, he couldn't take on a Manticore himself, at least not at the moment, if they were as vicious as Twilight made them out to be. He would need a weapon, maybe some gear to help protect him. He shook the thoughts out of his mind. The request for the missing cat was still there. He rubbed his chin, reading the request. Help wanted. Missing cat. Opalescence. Reward. 20 bits. There was a picture of the cat alongside the request. It was wide and fluffy. It looked like one of those rich cats that was groomed well and given proper treatment. Thinking back, Twilight mentioned there was a town called Canterlet for the nobles. Maybe it was a noble cat. His line of thought was cut short as he finished reading the request. If you find my precious opalescence, please deliver her to Carousel Boutique. So the request was from Rarity, the fashion pony that had fainted just from a glimpse of his outfit. 
Suddenly Naruto didn't really want to accept the request. But Rarity was one of Twilight's close friends, and the money wasn't something to ignore either. This would be a good opportunity, both to prove himself to Rarity, and to make a little more money. This shouldn't be a problem, I'm totally experienced with cats, he exclaimed after he pounded his chest with his hoof. Although this was about as far from the truth as it could be, it helped him to just say it out loud. As Naruto entered Carousel Boutique, he found himself worrying about Rarity seeing him a second time. He didn't have a choice though, he needed to know where she'd last seen her cat. Rarity came out from the back of the store as he entered, and the bell on the door had signaled his arrival. She frowned for a moment, then seemed to recall herself and put on an awkward smile. Oh my, it's the dearie with the cute fox tail. How are you? That cheery greeting caught him off guard. Why had she frowned then? Maybe it was a mixed expression, being offended by Naruto's fashion or lack thereof, but happy to see his foxtail again. Why wouldn't these ponies stop admiring his foxtail? I'm fine. I came here about your missing cat, was wondering where you saw it last. Oh, you're here to find my precious opalescence. She said with glee. She slammed her hoofs on the counter as she looked at him, her face contorting to a display of pure glee. Oh I'm so happy you took my request, Naruto. I don't know what I would do without my poor, sweet, fluffy opalescence. She means the world to me, you see. Ever since she ran away I've been distressed and worried. Please find her. Please. She despaired, flinging herself at Naruto her hooves flying around his neck. He stumbled backwards, catching a whiff of her shampoo as she hugged him tightly, to the point at which he couldn't breath. Alright, alright. Uh, I can't breath Rarity. Rarity obliged, letting go of his neck and backing up a few paces grinning sheepishly. Now, where was it that you last saw Opalescence? This is more trouble than it's worth. An hour had passed since he'd left Rarities. The last time she'd seen her cat was in her boutique, then she said that it must have wandered somewhere in town, most likely around Ponyville Square, so that's where he was going to start. He looked around the marketplace, the request board, and even under a couple of boxes and barrels, but there was no sign of the cat. How can something so white and fluffy be so hard to find? As he searched around he heard the sound of a hammer on metal. The sound led his eyes towards a small little shop. He peered inside, finding a black stallion with a grey horn. His fur looked a bit puffed out, and he had a couple of scars on his face. A picture of a hammer and an anvil was on the stallion's butt. Naruto kept wondering what was with the pictures. Then he noticed the furnace and anvil within the store. There's a blacksmith here in Ponyville. He wondered out loud. He could see an array of weapons and armor on display, ranging from long swords to daggers to small kitchen knives and tools requiring a craftsman's touch. The black stallion looked up at him, not showing much emotion in his voice. You hear Talok or Tabai? He said in a deep and grisly voice. Naruto merely shook his head. I'm just here looking I didn't know a blacksmith existed here in Ponyville Naruto said. The blacksmith just shrugged as he went back to smacking his hammer against the anvil. Naruto looked closely at the blacksmith's work and realized he was using unicorn magic to move the hammer and hold the blade in place. The blacksmith looked up a few moments later as he realized Naruto wasn't leaving. Not many people need weapons these days or armor for that matter. Some say there isn't enough bloodshed to warrant it the blacksmith began to say, Naruto listening intently. There hasn't been a war in a very long time you have these royal soldiers from time to time, passing by. But they seem to be mostly for show. Most ponies just buy weapons and armor as collection items and not for practical use, it's an insult to a blacksmith's pride. Naruto saw some wisdom in the blacksmith's words. Peace is a good thing to have though, right? Of course it is, but you have all these lollygaggers being all talk about being all rich with their fancy words of etiquette, you would think some ponies would be cautious nowadays. No one has a mind for war, but instead they have a mind of being show-offs. The blacksmith gave a bored stare at Naruto. But that's not the point. The point is my skill is going to waste. So why do you keep doing the things you do? I gotta make a living somehow. Selling weapons is what keeps me fed these days. The blacksmith said. As he moved his head from side to side, relieving the stiffness from his neck, he looked at Naruto. So, you interested in buying something to show off with? The blacksmith asked. Actually, now that Naruto thought about it, this opportunity right here was perfect. If he was going to be hunting for a manticore, he would need a weapon or two. He couldn't chop something off with his bare hands after all. Actually I was hoping to buy a weapon, for hunting purposes. Naruto asked. The blacksmith raised a brow. Hunting what, bunny rabbits? The blacksmith said with a chuckle. The manticore. Naruto said without hesitation. The blacksmith went wide-eyed at Naruto's response before chuckling heartily. The manticore, heh, that's a good one, Philly. You're ten years too young to be hunting big game like that he said as he kept on laughing. But fine, I'll humor you why do you want to fight a beast like a manticore? It's a request on the request board. There's a reward for getting a manticore tail. 
Naruto said. This made the blacksmith laugh even more. Billy, there's no way you can take on such a beast. Most of them tends to be 10 to 15 hoofs tall, with monstrous claws and a ferocious bite. Not to mention the scorpion tail. You'd be a dead colt before you could say oh no, I'm dead. I've probably fought worse Naruto retorted. Oh really what have you fought before? I've fought giant toads, giant snakes, and I've even had to fight monstrous abominations that were too distorted to even let live in the world. The unicorn blacksmith just lost all control, stopping his work as he held his gut in laughter. Naruto was getting annoyed at the black unicorn not believing him. While the blacksmith flailed about in his laughter, he slammed his hoof on a nearby barrel. Something white jumped out. Naruto's eyes widened as he noticed that it had white ears and white fluffy fur, though covered in black spots, likely from the smithy materials. Verity's cat, it's here. Naruto shouted. The blacksmith stopped laughing as he saw what Naruto was talking about. What in Equestria is a cat doing in my material barrel? Startled by the shouting, Opalescence ran off. Naruto widened his stance as the cat bounded towards the door. Oh no you don't you puff of fur. Naruto was suddenly across the room with the cat in his teeth. The blacksmith could only stare, wide-eyed and slack-jawed, at the pony that had just seemingly teleported to the doorway. He couldn't believe what he had just seen. Or rather what he hadn't. The pony's speed was amazing. Dot. Naruto walked back towards the blacksmith with teeth full of fur. Now do you believe me? The blacksmith blinked a couple of times as he gave a smile. You've got speed filly, but that doesn't mean you have combat experience, he said. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders, well anyway, it was nice talking with you. But right now, I have a reward to collect for this troublesome cat Naruto said. He was about to walk away until a voice from behind him shouted out. Hey, wait a sec filly. Naruto looked back to see the blacksmith walking towards him. What he said gave Naruto a smile that spread across his entire muzzle. The name's Blackie. Philly, you make me laugh. You pay the bits and I'll make you whatever manticore fighting weapon you like. But his business at the blacksmith's concluded, and a ball of fur in his mouth, Naruto headed back towards Carousel Boutique. It didn't take him long to reach as it was only a short walk away. The only issue he had on the way there was that Opalescence was constantly trying to scratch his nose or any other part the cat could manage to reach. Especially that one time he'd sneezed in response to the black soot the cat was covered in. She even managed to escape his mouth a time or two, but they managed to reach the boutique without any substantial problems. As he entered the building with a bundle of fur in his mouth, he placed the cat down on the nearby counter. Rarity, are you in here? I found a pulsus um, however you pronounce her name, he called out. Naruto caught the cat sneaking towards the door, promptly using his tail to hold the cat in place. The cat struggled as it shrieked wildly. Rarity's head popped out from the stairs. Oh dear, what is all of this noiopolescence? She screamed in delight as she discovered the creature that was being held down by Naruto's tail. She rushed towards the cat as Naruto just kept it in place. The cat stopped for a moment as its owner stepped into view, before looking the other way in disgust. Rarity furred her brow towards Naruto. Why are you holding my cat down with your tail? It's trying to get away from this building. I think it still has a grudge against you Rarity. Nonsense, my cat is of high class, and I know Opalescence loves me. She said as she nuzzled her cat. Don't you Opalescence. In response, the cat took a swipe at Rarity's nose. Rarity immediately reacted, managing to get away without a scratch. She squinted her eyes as she ignited horn. Naruto, release her. I'll take care of her. Naruto gave a nod as he lifted his tail away from the cat. It tried to take the opportunity to flee, but a purple aura quickly surrounded the cat, lifting it off the ground. Naruto stood in awe of Rarity's magic. As Opalescence was suspended in midair, Rarity noticed that it was covered in black powder. My word, Naruto, how did my cat get all dirty with all this soot? It was hiding at the blacksmith shop in a nearby barrel. I guess she got into some materials and she ended up like this. Naruto guessed. Rarity replied with a small nod. Using her magic to hold the cat in place, she went over to a nearby cabinet, opened a drawer and withdrew a small pouch that jingled in her grasp. She walked back over to Naruto with a bag in her mouth before placing it on the counter. There's your pay Naruto. And thank you for finding my cat. I would have found her myself, but there was just so much work to be done, and I just didn't want to dirty myself finding her. You don't like getting dirty. Not at all, a lady needs to have class after all. Nobles, always holding themselves to such ridiculous standards. Or maybe she's just the type of pony that likes to feel pretty and important. Women are weird that way. He shrugged as he finished his thought, looking at the bag for a moment before placing it in his jacket pocket, beside the other one. Well anyway Rarity, I hope to see you soon. Of course, darling. As he was about to exit through the door, he heard something else from behind. Before you go, there's one more thing, Naruto. Yes. I hope to see business from you in the future. 
It means a lot to me that you found my precious opalescence, it really does. She said. Naruto couldn't help but give a grin. It's no problem rarity. Well then. Now that that's taken care of she looked back at opalescence. It's time for your bath. I cannot believe you would run away and get dirty at the same time, the nerve. You are a cat of class, not some trash digger or such. Her horn ignited once again, floating the cat along behind Rarity against its will as it futilely tried to struggle out of the aura. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle nervously as he walked out the door. As he returned to the Ponyville Square, he found that the sun was quickly approaching the horizon. Dot it still baffled him that it required two particular princesses just for the night and day cycle to function correctly. But this also meant he had to be quick if he wanted to prepare for tonight. That's right, tonight, Naruto thought. He looked towards the square and quickly located the request board. He ran towards it to see what other requests were up there. Nothing seemed different than from when he checked last. He soon found himself looking at the Mantica request once again. He smiled briefly before ripping it off the request board with his teeth. After laying it on the ground and placing a hoof on it to keep it from blowing away, he started to read. All he knew from earlier was what Twilight had told him, the reward money, and that the requester was some person from Canterlot, so he needed to read it thoroughly. Hunting request. Manticur tail. Reward. 300 bits. Requester. Gary Clopper of Canterlot. Please see requester before undertaking task for more details. The picture of some guy in a top hat and in some kind of brown formal suit. Well, not some guy. More like some pony. He looked to be a stallion and had a white coat and black mane, a horn affixed to his forehead just like Twilight and Rarity. This unicorn looks like a noble. Now it made sense as to why he was offering such a big reward, but why did he need a manticore tail? Well, he would have to talk to the requester if he wanted to know any more about it. As he tucked the request sheet into one of his jacket pockets, he started to trot off towards Canterlot. And promptly stopped dead in his tracks. He had just realized that he had no idea where Canterlot was, nor did he have a map of the area. As he looked around, there were still ponies wandering about. He talked to a few of them to see where he could get directions or a map. It didn't take him long to learn that he could get a map from a nearby bookstore. He located the sign that was carved in the shape of a book right next to him when the ponies pointed to it. He scratched his head, wondering how he could miss such a thing. Entering the bookstore, he smelled the faint aromas of aging wood, dust, and old paper. It was a pretty big bookstore, shelves of books too. But he didn't have time to be gawking at how great it looked. He needed a map. He saw an earth pony stallion with a light red coat and a yellow mane. May I help you sir? Err, yes. I'm looking to purchase a map of the area. The stallion raised a brow at the strange request, but merely sighed. Why would you need a map of the area? You don't live here. Naruto found that response rather rude, but he kept his cool as he kept on talking. No, I guess you could say I'm new here, and I'm just trying to get a feel for my surroundings. Naruto responded. The stallion merely sighed once again as he pointed his hoof towards a stack of paper pamphlets. One bit for a map, would you like to purchase a book too while you're at it? No, just the map is fine the stallion raised his hoof and banged on the counter, causing Naruto to flinch in surprise. The red stallion placed both his hooves onto his head and started to mumble. Why is business so slow? You end up having a customer and you're supposed to be happy. But no, they don't want a book, they just want to either look around or purchase a paper map he then spread his hooves wide, as if showing off the store. We have books all around. This isn't some tourist attraction. Naruto couldn't help but scratch his chin in confusion. I'm sorry, I think. Naruto's response only pissed off the stallion even further as he banged both hooves on the counter. Naruto couldn't help but just say something in the form of advice. Er, look I'm sure you're having a bad day, we all do I'm at least giving you some kind of business right? That's not the point. The stallion replied. The point is that these books are going to waste. Don't you love the feel of a book, the fine print, the texture of a hard-covered book? These ponies are insane I tell you. Naruto only gulped. This pony was the insane one, and he really didn't want to talk him anymore. He took a bit from his pocket, placed it on the counter, and grabbed a pamphlet map with his teeth before slowly backing away. Well, um it was nice knowing you too red stallion, um, thingy, but I have to get going he hightailed it out of there, not wanting to deal with any more of this clerk shenanigans. Naruto started to familiarize himself with the map. As he looked at it, he found many different locations. He found the Everfree Forest, it was pretty close to town. That was where Twilight had said that he would probably find a manticore. In the other direction he found Canterlot, but the path looked fairly long. It would likely take him a full day just to get there. He was examining the map, trying to figure out how to get to Canterlot more quickly, when he suddenly ran into something, causing him to fall flat on his butt. He looked up as he rubbed his head in pain to find Pinkie Pie on the ground in front of him. Ow oh man, that hurt I didn't see you there Pinkie Pie. 
Pinkie Pie, who had also been rubbing her head as well, immediately perked her ears up and gave a very cheerful smile before tackling Naruto. He gave a yelp as he suddenly found Pinkie Pie on top of him. Boo, Naruto. Good to see you again. How are you doing? She said as she lightly hopped on his stomach. Did you have a good day? Did you do anything great? Ooh, or maybe she trailed off as she suddenly disappeared mid-sentence. Naruto turned his head to find out where she'd gone, only to realize that she was nowhere to be seen. Naruto slowly got up before he suddenly found himself back on his ass underneath Pinky, who had suddenly fallen on top of him. Or maybe you're lost, because I don't like being lost. Being lost is scary and spooky. I knew a friend named Spooky, but he was nothing but air, but I like talking to him. He's all whoosh or breezy, but he's a kind friend. Naruto got up once more, not understanding a word Pinky had said. How he kept running into her was a mystery, not to mention he doesn't understand how Pinky can be so damn hyper all the time. Ugh no, Pinky I'm trying to figure out the quickest way to canterlet. Pinky stopped hopping from Naruto's comment. Her mouth formed an O before hopping all around him once more. Ooh, what for? Business, friends, enemies, animals, flowers, riches, bits, um, candy. Business, mostly I need to meet some Ebo or some pony named Gary Clopper. Gary? Clopper. Mr. Cloppity Clop Clop, ha ha ha, she said in laughter. Her enthusiasm was enough to cause Naruto to chuckle as well. Hey ha, good one but seriously, I need to meet him. But according to my map, Naruto paused as he picked up the map in both hooves, it's going to take me a good while just to get to this place called Canterlet, he finished, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. The sun was going down, so it was possible that he would have to delay it until tomorrow. He didn't want to, but he really didn't have a choice at this point. Pinky took a peek at the map and gave Naruto a cheerful smile. Aw, oh, put that frown upside down Naruto. Maybe Twilight can help you. Pinkie Pie said in her cheery state. How is she going to help me? Naruto wondered. Silly filly, she has magic. She has that horn for a reason, Naruto. Just ask her to make you go poof and appear there. You'll end up getting there before you could say cotton candy. Twilight that was the last pony that he wanted to ask. He couldn't let her find out he was going to accept this task too, so he would have to be careful. Yeah, that's not a bad idea Pinkie Pie. Thanks for the advice. New problem. She said as she hopped away. Hey wait, where are you going Pinkie Pie? I'm just going to see Spooky. He's probably all lonely. Naruto half closed his eyes in disbelief. He watched her hop along road. That pony is insane. Why do you need to get to Canterlet, Naruto? Twilight asked. It hadn't taken long for Naruto to get to Twilight's house to ask her for a teleport to Canterlet. But she obviously wasn't going to do it without any reason. Fortunately, he'd already thought about that when he was on his way here. I just have some business over there to do. Some ponies in town said there's a guy I could talk to over there for some work. Maybe even a job. Twilight gave Naruto a polite smile. Really, what kind of job? She asked. Now this response Naruto didn't prepare for. Funny how he forgot to think about that part of the excuse. He laughed nervously as he tried to think up a good excuse. I am oh. That's right. Someone's looking for a dishwasher pony over there, and I hear the guy is short on help over there in terms of servants, so I figured I could go over there. I hear the pay is pretty good too. Twilight raised a brow at Naruto's response. A dishwasher, how huh well, that wouldn't be a bad job to have, and Canterlet is always looking for servants these days. She paused, loosing a sad sigh, nobles though they always depend on other ponies to do their work for them. It's sad to think about. Naruto gave her a small nod. She stopped what she was doing and looked straight at Naruto. All right then, we can go. But can it wait until tomorrow? Naruto shook his head at Twilight's response. I need to see if I can get that position today. It's good money and I'm sure that the position is in a lot of demand Twilight, looked towards the ceiling and then towards Naruto again, and gave him another smile. I guess that's true all right, come near me Naruto. She asked him. Naruto walked up next to Twilight, waiting for whatever she was about to do. Spike. She shouted towards Spike, whom was dusting the bookshelves. He turned towards Twilight's direction and gave a nod. Take care of the library while I'm gone, it won't take too long. He didn't want to lie to Twilight to begin with, but he didn't want to tell her he was going to hunt a manticore. He was sure that it would just worry her. She closed her eyes and focused magical energy into her horn, a flash of shining light blinded Naruto as he felt himself whisk away into the unknown. When the shining light dissipated, his stomach was churning as his hooves returned to solid ground. He keeled over, he felt like he was about to puke. It was a strange sensation, or maybe it was a strange pain. Either way, it felt like his body parts were stretching in several different directions while being teleported. Twilight placed a hoof on his shoulder. Naruto, are you alright? Twilight asked. 
Why yeah, I think so, it just felt like my limbs were being pulled into several different directions Naruto said weakly, as he slowly tried to find his bearings and get his mind off his stomach. They're probably just not used to teleporting. I know it was like that with some of my friends. But you get used to it after a while, at least. Naruto just shook his head. I doubt he'll get used to it he raised his head and blinked his eyes a few times. He found himself surrounded by really expensive buildings. The cobblestone roads, the pure white buildings, the unique architecture. Everything just shouted elegance and class. Is this really canterlet? Wow it looks so amazing. Twilight looked at him for a moment and then looked at the town. Welcome to canterlet, Naruto. So this was canterlet. He could see a few unicorns here and there, all wearing suits or other really exquisite clothes. It was more of a noble's town than anything he'd ever seen. He took a few steps forward as he took a quick look. So this is canterlet I didn't expect it to be such a high-class place around here. Naruto said out loud. He then turned back towards Twilight. Twilight, I'll meet you back here in about an hour or so, is that alright? Twilight raised a brow, she was wondering what Naruto's rush was. First it was canterlet and already he wanted to head off after just arriving here. You don't want me to give you a tour. Nah, it's alright Twilight. I need to hurry anyway, I wouldn't want that position to be taken before I get there. He said, running off into a random direction. Twilight blinked a few times, thinking it's strange that Naruto would do that. Maybe it was a really good dishwashing position. Once he managed to get away from Twilight, he took a look around as he got the request paper out. He needed to find this Gary Clopper fellow, and fast. The sun was sliding down the horizon as he trotted along. Maybe he could ask a few unicorns around here on where this Gary might be. He began showing the picture around to the unicorns that passed by, but was consistently ignored by all of them. Naruto raised his brow, confused at the actions. When he approached another lone unicorn stallion, he promptly shrieked before taking off in the opposite direction. That sure was a girly pair of lungs on that stallion. Naruto repeated his inquiries, but made no headway. Every pony either shooed him away, took off or told him how filthy his clothes were. Though the last one was a bit more than he would normally take, he was running short on time and didn't have enough to waste on being angry at them. Eventually he took a seat on a nearby bench, grumbling a little as he wondered why everyone was treating him like such an outcast. Maybe they had a higher standard here in Canterlot. As Naruto pondered how to search for this Gary Clopper guy, he looked up to see another unicorn he hadn't talked to yet. He was wearing a brown suit and had a black mane on him, a top hat, and what looked to be a lightning bolt on his rear end. Again, what was with all the markings on everyone's butt? But nonetheless, maybe this guy knew where this Gary was. He gave him a poke on his back and the stallion turned around. Hello. Do you know some pony named Gary Clopper? Naruto asked, while showing him a picture of the guy. Naruto was expecting another negative response, like all the others, but what he was expecting didn't happen. The stallion adjusted the glasses on his nose and gave a nod towards Naruto. Indeed, I know this Gary Clopper. What is your business with him? He placed a request on the request board back down in Ponyville. I'm here to accept it. The stallion blinked for a moment as he took a good look at Naruto. He took in Naruto's appearance briefly, squinting his eyes as he took in his hair, his clothing, the bandana that Naruto wore. Follow me, I lead you to him. Naruto gave a big smile at this unicorn's response. Wow, really you know where he is, and you lead me to him, he couldn't believe it. After spending however long he'd spent searching, he was finally going to meet this Gary Clopper guy. As they trotted along, they stopped at what looked like a medium-sized house, it was white and red, with a small gold trim along the sides of the house. It was a noble's house, very exquisite. Naruto looked at the stallion in the brown suit and waved his hoof towards the house. This is Gary Clopper's house. I'm sure he's expecting you. The stallion said. Naruto raised a brow at the stallion's response. He is? But, I haven't even made an appointment or even met him yet the stallion grinned at Naruto's response. That's because he's right in front of you, my dear boy. Naruto blinked at the stallion's response. He looked at the picture in the request sheet and then back at the stallion. The face Naruto gave was that of surprise, confusion, and excitement. As they entered the house, Gary led the way to his study. Naruto marveled at all the exquisite decorations, a few statues carved in the likeness of Gary, various antique pottery, even canvases of fine art. Naruto, of course, didn't recognize the famous ponies were depicted in the extravagant art. As Gary led the way, he used the magic from his horn to open a slightly dark room. As Naruto entered, his nose and eyes felt like they'd been bashed in. All around him the sight and smell of tomes, paper, books, ink had made him blink for a few moments as his eyes adjusted to the darkness. Gary looked at Naruto with a chuckle. Ah yes, forgive me. It tends to be rather dark here in my study. Allow me his horn shined once more with magic as the area was lit up instantly. 
A flame crackled in a nearby fireplace, making Naruto blink once more as his eyes readjusted to the light. The room was full of bookshelves, which were in turn full of books, and what appeared to be a variety of plants and mushrooms. He even saw a few bottles of liquids with metal brewing stands below. Naruto raised a brow at this. The shapes of those bottles seemed familiar to him. Please, take a seat, we have much to discuss, I'm sure Gary said to Naruto. He looked at Gary and gave a nod. He sat in a nearby sofa seat. It was really soft, and it felt fantastic, solid smooth wood with plush cushions that just felt amazing. Gary sat in the sofa chair across from him. There was a coffee table between them, holding a picture frame of some pony and a couple of books. There was also a small tea set sitting there as well. Barry brought his front hooves together, as if thinking and studying Naruto in an intelligent and elegant manner. So then what is your name, young one? It's Naruto, Mr. Clopper. Please, no need for formalities. It's flattering, but please, call me Gary. Gary corrected. Naruto scratched his head as he gave a nod. All right then, Gary it is. Naruto said. Gary used his magical horn to pour himself a cup of tea from the kettle into an exquisite cup, having that of yellow and blue rims around the cup. With the magic enveloping the cup, he took a small sip of tea. D, Naruto. I'm fine, Gary. But thank you. Very well then he placed the cup on a saucer and eyed Naruto carefully. What brings you in search of me, Naruto? Naruto took out a sheet of paper from his pocket and showed it to Gary. You made a request on the request board down in Ponyville. I came here to accept it. Naruto began. You're in search of someone to hunt down a manticore to get its tail. It was rather annoying trying to get here to Canterlot, but I'm here to make your request come true. Yes, this is true. I am in search of a manticore tail. But tell me Naruto. Gary began, leaning back in his chair. What's driving you to take such a dangerous task? Every other pony didn't want to take it, due to how fierce and dangerous manticores are these days, especially since there has been an increase of them as of late. By reason Naruto began, and Gary merely nodded. I'm hoping to get the money from this request so I can purchase a house in Ponyville. Plus, it sounds like this manticore business sounds exciting. Barry raised a brow at Naruto's reasoning. A house. You mean you don't live in Ponyville? Naruto shook his head. Where do you live then? I'm temporarily living in a friend's house. Naruto began. You could probably say I'm a traveler and that I'm hoping to settle down in Ponyville. But since I don't have much in terms of bits, this manticore request should get me a house. At least, I hope so now that Naruto thought about it, he didn't know how much houses usually cost around here. He could imagine it would be expensive in Canterlot, but Ponyville, he had no idea. The house, well, yes, 300 bits would certainly get you at least a small house of your own Gary started to ponder aloud, as he used the magical power of his horn to bring to him what looked like a wooden pipe. He placed the tip of the pipe into the fireplace, letting the cackling flames light it up for him. Using his horn, he placed the pipe into his mouth, taking a small toke before removing the pipe and blowing the smoke across the room. Barry gave a small sigh as he held his pipe with his magic. It's a decent reason for taking this request, I suppose unlike some other ruffians who just want to make riches just for the fame and such. Others have tried to take it too. Only two one of them I greatly denied of them taking the request, because he looked like the suspicious sort, always grinning and twitching like a madcold. I tell you my boy, there are some weird ponies in this world ah yes, and then there is one named Tazkin. He seemed like the hunter sort, carrying a crossbow and head muscles all over. So I did give him the request at one point, but. But. He disappeared without a trace, and this was two days ago. So he either got eaten, or he ran away. I only pray it was just running away he was rather a bit of a boaster, which made me hesitate slightly. Gary gave a small chuckle. Ah he was funny though. It gave me a good laugh. Naruto gave a nod. Sounds like he could boast about how well he runs away. Gary chuckled at Naruto's joke. Indeed but anyway, yes, a how sounds like a decent reason. You are aware of the Everfree Forest, correct? Naruto shook his head. I saw such a location on my map, but other than that, I do not know it. I see it's a rather dark and dangerous forest that contains all sorts of creatures and beasts, including the manticore itself. Most ponies tend to stay away from it. It is surprising that you don't know about it. But then again he stopped for a brief moment as he took another puff from the pipe, before looking at Naruto once again. You're not from this area, after all. Suddenly there was a silence between the two of them, only interrupted by the crackling of the fire. Gary seemed to be a pretty nice unicorn, compared to the other nobles around the area. Very content, sophisticated, and appeared to be well off, but didn't act like a greedy snob like many of the others. Naruto simply nodded towards him. Gary seemed to be lost in thought. As Naruto looked back towards him he blinked a couple of times and straightened up into a more rigid sitting position. Prepare to hear a little story, Naruto. A story that explains why I need a manticore tail. 
Naruto gives a nod. Actually, I was hoping to ask you about that. Why do you need a Manticore tail? As a trophy. Gary sat up for a moment, thinking about Naruto's words, and walked towards the fireplace. No, not as a trophy, but to save a life. My daughter's life. Naruto went wide-eyed at his sudden declaration. You have a family. I used to my wife had passed away a long time ago, and the only surviving pony in my bloodline is my daughter she's in that picture frame in front of you. Naruto blinked a couple of times as he looked at the glass coffee table, remembering the small picture frame. With both hooves, he reached out to take a closer look at it. And it was an adult earth pony with a grey coat and a pink mane, wearing what looked like eyeliner and lipstick, and there was another pony, who appeared to be Gary Clopper himself, on the right side of the picture. They both looked so happy together. In the middle stood a grey mare with a stylish black hairstyle, and a sophisticated smile that could probably shatter a pony's sanity with cuteness. Ah, my wife, Termi and she played very sweet music when it came to the piano always elegant very classy, like a sweet little flower in a blossoming field Naruto looked back up at Gary and blinked a couple times. When I hear her music, it is like a sweet symphony of heaven, you could just lose yourself to her tune. You could say it could manipulate any male stallion out there and use that to puppet others into her dirty work Naruto went wide-eyed at this, but Gary only gave a small chuckle. That last part was a joke my dear boy. But regardless, I was the luckiest stallion to have her as my wife and the luckiest stallion to have a daughter with her which brings me to my reason with Octavia. What's your reason? Naruto asked. My daughter is dying, you see with a disease that my wife had. Naruto almost dropped the picture frame in response to what he just said. Dying. His daughter was dying. Gary continued but looked down towards the fireplace. My wife had a genetic disease, a disease that infects the heart with some sort of virus. I am not too keen on medical knowledge, but it was like winding up a grandfather clock. Once you wind it up and time runs out he began and then looked back at Naruto. It is over. Naruto looked down back at the picture frame while Gary continued on with a frown on his face. I had a chance to save her, but no matter the components I had for my potions, I could not save her he said as he placed a hoof on part of the fireplace. I wanted to save her, but I couldn't just because there wasn't a known cure, because my knowledge of alchemy didn't save her, and because the hospital didn't know how to save her either, I had been researching my days away to figure out how I could have stopped this, to see if there really was a chance and yet. When I actually did find a cure, after several weeks of studying, I told myself what was the point. She was dead, you couldn't do anything, and it's not like you could revive the dead. I wish I could revive the dead, only to see her again tears ran down Gary's eyes, all the way down his cheeks, and landing on the edge of the fireplace. Naruto couldn't help but be moved by all of this. There was a father finding a cure for his daughter, but he was guilty of not saving his wife. Naruto sat up a bit to pat him on the back. Don't be like that Gary. While her life was short, I'm sure she had wonderful memories with you. I bet they were the happiest times of her life, and she couldn't have been happier. He said with a smile. What you should focus on now is actually saving your daughter she's your pride and joy, isn't she? Gary's head shot up as Naruto spoke and he gave a firm nod as he wiped his tears away. Yes yes, you're right. I I need to focus on the now, I need to focus on the very thing I can defeat that I couldn't defeat before Gary sat back down to collect his thoughts, Naruto promptly doing the same. Alright yes, yes anyway, my daughter, Octavia, has the same genetic disease, and so far, the hospital has kept it in check, but I do not know for how long which is why time is of the essence. I have already researched a cure and already have all of the components for it, except for a manticore's tail. And as I've said before, no one has succeeded in getting me one. It would be a miracle if anyone were to take down such a beast this is why I sent out the request. I lack combat experience, and my magic is not the type for combat. This is why, Naruto Gary leans forward towards Naruto, please, accept my request and bring me the tail, and I will forever be in your debt. My daughter is the only thing I have left. Naruto stood up and gave him a smile. A smile of hope, a smile of glee and, most importantly, a smile of determination. He pounded his chest. That tail is as good as mine, Gary. I won't let your daughter die from some stupid disease. Not a chance. And you can believe it. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.